Welcome back to Monster Tamer, a 2D Pokemon-like RPG created Phaser 3. Previously, we started creating our battle monster and our enemy monster uh, classes for our battle scene, and we started moving out some of the logic from our battle scene into these classes. If you missed the previous videos, there will be links in the video description to the source code up to this point, as well as the completed source code for this video. There will also be a link to the previous videos if you'd like to catch up. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to jump over to our battle scene and what we're going to end up doing is we're going to take all of our logic for creating our player and enemy health bars and we're going to move this over to our battle monster class. Uh, so this will involve all the game objects, uh, so like the text for our monster name, the level, uh, the health bars, uh, metadata, and even the background. So to do that, let's jump over to Battle Monster and let's add in a new private method. And so for this private method, we're going to call this create health bar components. And then what we'll do is inside here, this is where we're going to place our logic. Uh, so if we swap over to our battle scene, let's go ahead and copy some of our code tied to our enemy game monster. And so for our enemy monster, what we're going to do is we're going to need our name and our container and then all of the game objects that we're actually creating. So we're just going to copy this code here. And we'll come back to our battle monster class. We'll paste in that code. And so what we're going to do is let's jump up to our constructor where we create our health bar. And instead of creating our health bar inside a constructor, what we'll do is we're going to create this down in our health bar component method. So we'll paste that down here. Then in our constructor, we'll go ahead and call our new method. So after we create our game object for our monster, we'll do this, create health bar components. And then we'll come back down to our code. So we'll go ahead and create our health bar. After we create our health bar, uh, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and create our monster name text. So let's get rid of this reference here because we'll no longer need it. And so we'll have, instead of enemy monster name, uh, what we'll do is we'll do monster name game text. And we need to reference our phaser scene. So let's do that. And then for our text, we actually want to reference our name. So we're going to do this.name and we'll keep the same styling. Then what we'll do is just to make this a little bit cleaner, we're going to move some of this logic out into its own variables and then just pass those variables in here. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll do const and we'll do our health bar background image and we'll set that equal to this logic here. So let's copy that, paste that here and we'll reference our scene and we need to go ahead and import in our battle asset keys. All right, and so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and paste that in place of that code. Then uh, we'll go ahead and paste in that logic for our monster name. So now we need to reference our health bar container. So we'll do this, we'll have our health bar, we'll have container, and we need to go ahead and do this dot scene for our container. And then, so next we'll need to go ahead and add in our health bar level text and our monster HP text. So we'll make two new variables. We do const, we'll do our monster health bar level text. And we'll do const monster HP text. And then we'll just copy this. We'll set it equal to that. And we'll do our scene. We'll do our monster name game text to get our width. And then for here, and we'll know what, we'll just go ahead and paste that in here real quick. And then let's copy this logic here. We'll set it equal to our other variable. And we'll update our reference. So this, our scene, add, we'll save, and let's just add a space. And we'll go ahead and update our reference here. And we'll go ahead and save. So now what we'll do is we'll need to store our reference to our phaser container. Uh, so we come up to the top of our class, we'll go ahead and add in that reference. So let's add our new protected property. We'll do phaser health bar game container. 
And we're just going to copy this logic here. And this will be a container. So if we come back down to our method, we'll store a reference to that game container. All right, so for our class, uh, what we need to do is we need to update a few of our strings so they're a little bit more dynamic. So right now, our level is hard-coded to 5. And when we scale in our background image uh, for our enemy monster, we want it to be smaller than our player game monster. And so we'll need to make both of those things configurable. And so to do that, let's jump over to our type def.js file. And we're going to add in a few new types. So in our battle monster config, we'll add in a new property. And so for this property, uh, this is going to be a number. And so this is when we'll add in our scaling. Uh, so we're going to call this scale health bar background image by Y. And we're going to make this uh, required. So we'll add in a default value and we're going to set it to one if it's not provided. Then for our monsters level, uh, what we'll do is we'll add in a new property. And this will be a number, and this will be a current level. So then what we should be able to do is we come back to our battle scene. Uh, so when we create our monster, uh, what we'll need to do is we'll need to provide a level. Uh, so we'll go ahead and add in our property. So we'll do current level. We'll go ahead and set to equal to 5. And then so what we need to do is we need to go ahead and pass in our scaling. So if we jump over to battle monster right now, when we create our background, it is we're setting to 0 0.8. Uh, so instead of passing that in from our battle scene, uh, what we'll do is we're going to abstract that away into our enemy battle monster class. Uh, so we actually need to update our config with that new value. And so to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new object and we're going to do that by copying the configuration object that's provided and then we're going to go ahead and add a new property to this object and so this is where we'll set our 0 0.8. So now that we have our scale, what we need to do is we need to pass that into our create health bar components uh, method. And so what we'll do is we will go ahead and add that as a param. Uh, so we'll do scale health bar by background image by Y. And let's go ahead and add in that default value now. Uh, so we're gonna set that equal to one if it's not provided. And then let's go ahead and set that here. So then what we need to do is when we call this method, uh, we need to go ahead and pass in our config. So we'll do our config and our scale health bar background image by Y. All right, so then next what we'll do is in our battle monster class, let's just go ahead and add in a getter for our level. Uh, so we're just going to copy this logic here. We're going to change this to level. And for our reference, this will be our monster details. And it's going to be our current level. Then if we come back to where we create our health bar components, we'll go ahead and update our reference. So instead of L5, we're going to change this to L. And then our level for our current monster. All right, so now that the logic in our health bar components is more dynamic, what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump back over to our battle scene and we're gonna update our active enemy uh, monster and we're gonna remove our old uh, health bar components tied to our enemy monster. So what we should be able to do is we should be able to go ahead and just remove this logic completely since it's all abstracted away inside our battle monster class and we should still see our health bar component. All right, so now that we have the logic working for our active enemy battle monster, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and create a class for our player battle monster. Uh, so what we'll do is we jump over to our source code. Uh, inside our monsters folder, let's go ahead and add in our player, player, battle, monster, .js. And to get us started, we're just going to copy the code from our enemy battle monster class into our player battle monster class. Then we're going to go ahead and update some of our references. So this is going to be player position. And this will be a player battle monster. And so we'll want to update our position. So if we jump over to our battle scene, let's go to where we create our player game object. And so we have 256 and 316. 
And then what we'll need to do is let's jump over to our battle scene and let's create our uh, instance. So we'll add a new property and this is going to be active player monster. Uh, let's just copy this line here for our type and we'll update our class. So we'll have our player battle monster. Then right after we create our enemy monster, we'll go ahead and create our player so we'll do this and we'll do our active player monster will be equal to a new player battle monster. And what we'll do is we're just going to copy our configuration from our enemy. And, and we'll go ahead and update our references. So we'll reference Iguana Ignite for both our name and asset key. We'll keep the same HP and attack IDs being empty for the time being. Same with base attack and level. And so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna comment out our code that's tied to our player monster. So if we go ahead and comment that out, and then if we go ahead and comment out this logic here uh, before we create our health bar. And then we'll need to go ahead and comment out our reference and we'll go ahead and save. And so for our player battle monster, what we'll need to do is we're actually gonna need to update some of the properties uh, on our game objects. Uh, so currently uh, when we create our player monster game object, we have to call the set flip X property in order to have the monster to face the same direction. And we actually need to update the position uh, for our health bar components. So what we'll do is in our constructor, after we call the super method, this is where we'll go ahead and update those values. So we're going to need to reference our protected phaser game object. Um, and because it is protected, we can access it in our child classes. Uh, this is one of the main reasons we wanted this to be protected versus private. So then that way we can modify it. So now if we do set flip X, we're going to set this to true. Then we're going to reference our container for our health bar and we need to update our position. So we're going to update this to the position we originally set it to. Uh, so we'll do 556 followed by 318 for our Y value. So now when our scene updates, we'll see our monsters facing the right direction and our health bar is shown. However, uh, what we want to do is we don't actually need to update our scaling because we need to add in some more data. Uh, so for our player, we are also adding in the current health and the max health and displaying that below beneath the health bar. Uh, so to do that, what we'll want to do is we need to go ahead and add that to our health bar uh, container. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a new method and we're just going to call this add health bar components and this is where we'll add those in and create them so what we'll do is we're going to create a property on our class and we'll make this private and this is going to be our health bar text game object and for our type this is going to be a phaser game objects text game object. And so we need to store a reference to this because when we take damage, we're going to want to update that value instead of leaving it at the 25. So then in our add health bar components method, what we'll do, this is where we'll set that property. And what we're going to do is jump over to our battle scene. And we'll go ahead and expand our code and let's copy our logic for we're adding in that text here. So we're just going to copy this here back to player battle monster we'll paste it and then let's go ahead and get rid of our commented out code and let's go ahead and put this back on the same line and now we just need to reference our phaser scene uh, so we'll do our protected property and we'll do add uh, so then what we actually need to do is we need to update our text uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to add a new uh, property to do that and the reason for that is we need to set this here and when every time we take damage, we're going to want to update that text the same way. So what we'll do is we're just going to make a new private method. We'll do set health bar text and inside here we'll reference our health bar text game object. We'll call our set text method and what we'll do is we're going to reference our current health and then we'll do our divider and then we'll reference our max health. And then what we'll do is inside here, 
we'll go ahead and set this to an empty string. After we set our origin, we'll go ahead and call our new method. And now we just need to add it to our container. So if we reference our phaser health bar game container, we can call it the add method and do this, and then our health bar text game object. All right, and then we just need to go ahead and actually call this method. So if we come up to our constructor, let's go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and save. So now when our scene refreshes, we should see for our player monster, we should now have our text on our health bar component. And for our monster class, uh, for our player, the last thing we need to do is update our take damage method. So we update this text when we take damage. So what we're going to do is let's jump over to our battle scene. And what we'll do is where we were taking damage before, uh, we're going to go ahead and call our active enemy. We'll take damage. What we'll do is we'll add in a callback. And so after our player does damage to the enemy, our enemy would attack us. And so just to simulate this, we'll reference our active player monster, and we'll do take damage, and we're going to do 15. And now if we save, you'll see our health bar updates, but our text doesn't. So this is where we need to update that method. And so to do that, what we can do is we can override our take damage uh, method on our player battle monster class. And so to do that, we're just going to copy this logic here. We're going to add that public method to our player battle monster class. And what we want to do is we want to still call the logic that's inside our battle monster class itself. And we want to do additional logic. And normally uh, with your classes is if you define the same uh, method, uh, what it'll do is it's going to override your ba base class and the logic in your base class will not run only the logic in your child class will run. But you can run the parent class's logic by using the super keyword. And so to do that, uh, what we'll do is we're going to do super, uh, we're gonna reference our parent class, and now we're gonna call the take damage method, and we will just pass in our params that we received in our child's take damage method. Now that we've called the parent, if we save, our game should still work like it did before, but now we can go ahead and update our logic. So what we'll do is we're going to call our set health bar text method, go ahead and save. So now you'll see when our player takes damage, and let me go ahead and refresh, we can see it again, um, our text actually updates. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna clean up some of our code. So now that we have all this working, we've tested it, let's go ahead and comment out our code that we had before. So we're just going to clean this up, clean that up, and we'll go ahead and save. Make sure everything still works. Perfect. All right, with that, that brings this video to an end. Uh, in our next video, what we're going to do is now that we have our core monster classes, we're going to start adding in the functionality for having our monsters attack each other, and we're going to tie that to our menu. Uh, so then that way, when we start choosing an attack, then we're going to go ahead and trigger the attack on the enemy, and our enemy will attack us back. And then that way, we can simulate our battle going back and forth, and then eventually, when one of us is knocked out, we would play some type of animation. Uh, so as a reminder, there's a link in the description of the video to the complete source code for this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video in the series is released. For more great Phaser 3 content, please see some of the links on your screen now.